Yo, 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 what's good, everybody? What's good, what's good, what's good? This is your boy, LaShawn Sugar Ray Marston, host of the Sugar Ray Show here with another incredible episode, man. Today we have another, I know I say this all the time because everybody's dead to me, another dead, dead, dead brother, but this brother is really special, um, not only because of what he does, but because of who he is, not only to me, but to tons of people, not only here in America and in the cities, but throughout the world, man. He's an incredible educator, hip hop yoga specialist, instructor, um, musician, you know, actor, all around talent, all around artist, man, um, all around, you know, thinker, leader, um, just all of the things, you know, you expect and you desire in a black man, his brother embodies. You got brother Priceless, Priceless here, man. We're gonna yeah, get thanks, to thanks, yeah, thanks, 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 yeah, thanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. While we're talking to him, and we'll get right to it. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Sugar Ray. Appreciate course, you, course, brother. Of course. So we're going to start with a quote of his. My thoughts become lyrics. Lyrics have the ability to change lives. People connect through music. George Vickery, a.k.a. Priceless. George yes, yeah. Vickery, also known as Priceless, hip-hop yoga artist, actor, educator, ABA therapist, and philanthropist, was born in Linden, Guyana, and at the age of three, migrated to Brooklyn, New York. Priceless discovered his talent as a writer in Miss Green's high school literature class. She saw something special in young Priceless as a poet and encouraged him to continue writing. Even though he enjoyed expressing himself through writing, his dream was to play in the NBA. After his NBA dreams didn't go as planned, he started to turn his poetry into music. He started to share his lyrical gifts with others, performing in Herkimer County Community College talent shows, where he attended and majored in early childhood education. He recorded and performed with Angela Sims, who was with Island Jam Label at the time. He opened up a show for Everton Blender in 2006. Fast forward to now, 2023, Priceless is now considered a hip hop yoga artist, combining his talents in yoga as well as hip hop. Appearing on front cover of Brown Eyes Magazine, doing walkout performances for MMA fighters, as well as hosting a YouTube show for children with autism. Priceless is not just a rapper. He lives his music. If he's not on stage moving the crowd, he has given back to his community and communities around the world. Strong-minded, talented, determined, pure of heart, he truly lives up to his name. Priceless. Yo, Absolutely. appreciate you, brother. Thank you, man. As, as, Thank as, as, Thank you as, again. as people have heard, you not only do a lot, but you are a lot, man. Um, how are you doing today, good brother? Uh, man, today, as any other day, I can't complain about a thing. You know, we take it day to day. You know, I'm going to be honest with you. You know, it's an up, it's a up, it's a uphill battle. You know what I mean? And, you know, I, I just got to be real. You know what I'm saying? As, as, as real as day, they would say, you know, you know the saying, how the saying goes, you know, um, every day is not, is not a, uh, it's not the best days. You feel what I'm saying? But we make it work. You know, what I mean, because we understand that, you know, along with the, the good days, you know, what I'm saying there comes days of challenges where we have to, you know, uh, where it. Uh, how would you say it uh, tests our faith? Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so, um, you know, every day we go through it, you know, and hopefully I get I get on, on my last day of our uh, classes. I get I get a, a, a passing grade. You feel <laughs> what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thanks. Give thanks for your endurance. Give thanks for your mindset. So let's get right to it. Um, something yeah, I've yeah. always wanted to know. Um, how'd you get the name Priceless? And why'd you why do you spell it the way you do? P R Y C L S S. No E's, no vowels other than the Y, which is sometimes a vowel. Um, yeah, where where'd the name come from and why do you spell it the way you do? Ah, uh, I'm glad that you asked that, man. There's a lot of people that ask, uh, you know, how did I get the name? But you're the first person that actually asked me why did I why I spell it the way I spell it, mm -hmm. and um, honestly, my bro, uh, I would say this, man. I was I was given that name, priceless with with the E's, spelled P R I C E L E S S. You know what I mean? Just by the way how I move and how I used to dress. You know what I'm saying? When I used to go to, I was in college upstate New York, and um, a friend of mine, his name is Yanni. He's now a, a, a teacher himself, educator himself. Um, while we were there, you know, he was like, yo, man, yo, bro, you how you how you wear how you wear construction Tims, some brand new construction Tims in this six feet snow, bro. Like, 
and you, your pants is always crispy, like yo, you priceless, yo. So you know what I mean. And <laughs> I was, I was just now becoming a rapper. You know what yeah. I'm saying. So I just ran with the name, man. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like I, I ran with the name Priceless, man. So um, and years down the line, you know, after me, just you know, becoming more engulfed in 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 the art of hip hop and the art of rapping. You know what I mean? Like I develop myself. I say, you know what? I need to I need to set myself apart from everyone else. You know, um price, yeah, priceless is cool. You know what I mean? Like it's it's a it's a great name, but how could you make the name priceless priceless? Ooh. You know what I mean? So I said, you know what? How about I spell it different? You know what I mean? Like, let's start there. How about you start there? And so I say, you know what? Let me take out these E's and that, that, that. You know what I mean? And honest to God, bro, I would love to say that it was it was my thought and, you know, everything came from me. But I, 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 I kid you not, I could never do that. You know what I mean? I have to give all praises to the Most High because he instructs me and instructs my thoughts. You know what I mean? To move in the way that it moves. So that right there... If I had to think about it a million times, like a million times over, I, I would. I don't think I would have ever did that. So I, I, I just have to give the, you know, the, the, uh, just the all praises. You know what I'm saying to the Most High for giving me that inspiration to to be able to spell it that way and to set myself apart. You know the way. Yeah. Yeah, that's divine guidance, man. That's beautiful, right? Yes, like, yes. Like that, you know, because um, a lot of the things that you know a lot of us or all of us embody in a way is is not our own thinking right it's just thoughts that come but it's not like we said and thought about it it's just it comes and we got to follow it right and yes. probably yes. Take a beat in that way right because that's um you know too many times ego gets in the way it's like now nah, I, yes. I gotta figure it out and it's like you don't gotta figure it's already figured out if it comes do it as it came it's already figured out my bro straight up you just gotta keep stepping Right. So let's get to it. Um, I know you mentioned, you know, high school literature, Miss Green really inspiring you to write. But obviously that meant you were writing before that. If you could remember, what's the earliest age that you remember falling in love with writing and expressing yourself through words? I could tell it, it, it came right to me as, as you said that. Oh, I go it. back to my I go back to my uh I go back to let's say when we started doing this, uh, I think they started doing this back in middle school when they had you write your journals, mm. right? And when I used to write my journals, I used to get, I used to really get into it. You know what I mean? Like I really used to tell all, you know what I mean? You know how the girls have the diaries and everything yeah. like that. They talk about everyday situations and actual, you know, like I was really into it. I, I would explain, you know, about the troubles I was going through at home, you know what I mean? Growing up in a single parent household with my mom and, you know what I mean? Sometimes I used to, I get disciplined, you know what I'm saying? And I used to take it out in the journal, you know what I mean? Like, I used to get disciplined real rough, you know what I mean? Um, you know, no discredit to my mom and everything like that, how she raised me and things like that, because, you know, I am the way I am today, you know, because of that. But um, it just a lot of the rage that I had inside and a lot of the things that I was seeing within my community and things like that, just growing up in the projects in Vanderveer, Brooklyn, um, I would take it to the journal, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, how some, some kids might react, you know, bad in school and do this and do, you know what I'm saying? Like, and you know, you, or not even that some people would, uh, how rappers do now. You would you would take to the pen and the pad and you know jot down your your, your thoughts and write some rhymes and things like that. I used to take that and you know write in my journal what I was going through day to day. You know what I'm saying? Like how 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 bad I felt when my mom beat me. You know what I'm saying? Like how the welts on my skin. You know what I'm saying? Like I there were some times where I, I I'm be honest once again brutally honest you know what i'm saying i said some things about my mom you know what i mean that i wish i could take back you know what i mean but those that was just how i felt at the time you know what i'm saying and that rage you know what i mean and that just goes to show you know as parents sometimes we could take it a little bit too far when it comes down to discipline 
you know what I mean? And we don't see the 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 uh the pain and the, the things that we inflict upon our on, upon our children, you know what I mean? The trauma, you know what I mean, that 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 sticks with them, you know. So uh that's that's how I express myself. Powerful, powerful. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. You know, um, and just to you know connect deeper with you. So something I realized, two things you said, you know, um, number one, it's such a tough conversation, right? Like that particular <laughs> part of it, because um, as I've learned, discipline can only come from within, right? You cannot discipline anyone else. You cannot make anyone else behave in a certain way, right? Clearly people think that because discipline comes from yourself, like sacrificing something now for a later goal, right? Yeah. Um, so obviously, right, and it's like, a, um, so that was the first thing I learned. The second was talking years ago with a sister of mine and speaking about, you know, us being hit, you know, um, my dad never hit me um, when he passed. My mom was hitting me, right? Um, mm -hmm. And someone said, you know, say, yo, you know, we have these conversations about other people hit children and there a lot of adults who say, well, I am how I am because of that. And it's actually, I would say, it's not that you are who you are because of that. You are who you are in spite of that. In spite, yes, yes, violence yes, yes. Violence begins violence. So it doesn't matter how we see it. It's putting your hands on someone is violent. And the fact that we are choosing to operate differently, we are choosing not to hit people, we are choosing to resolve conflict, resolve conflict with words, with mediation. Or if we can't resolve it, we're choosing to step away from a person, right? Mm -hmm. Peers, siblings, even as our children are of age, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it's, it's, it's important to anchor that for people. It's like, because there are a lot of people who say that, and there are a lot of people who say, you know, they were hit by their parents and say, I'm good now, but then they have deep trust issues, right? They have disassociation issues, right? So, yeah, you might be good in terms of you're making money, you know, you're not in jail and all of those things, but are you really good? And then secondly, the other thing I realized, and obviously not you, but I was, you know, obviously I went to prison. And I know that talking to people with violent crimes who are in prison a great majority of us were hit as children. So yes. we learned violence, right? And so we could, yeah, absolutely no knock on our parents because that's how they learned. That's what, that's how they were raised. So it was like, you know, it's just, it's tough, man. So I just really appreciate you for being open with that, you know? Um, and I give thanks, well, to, is, thanks to, you know, mom for doing the best she could, the best she knew, right? Mm -hmm. Try to keep you on the path to success. Cause obviously that's what they want. They just want it to be successful. They want right. To be cool. They don't want us to get in trouble. They wanted to follow their guidelines, and so um, yeah. Give thanks. Give thanks to all of the parents who have always done their, who have always done the best that they knew they could with what they had, right? Um, yeah. And give thanks to us who are breaking those cycles and not repeating those patterns. Yes, 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 yes. I would also like to say, you know, uh, and stress the fact that you know it's. I'm. I'm today. I'm mindful. I'm very much mindful, but I also I, I'll let you I'll, I'll let you know firsthand how that affects how you deal with your children. Mm -hmm. You know, today, you know, um, there's a lot of times where I have to step back and or step out of myself and see exactly what I'm doing to my child today. You know, and ask myself, am I handling it accordingly? You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Am I following the cycle? Mm -hmm. You know, or am I, you know, diverting from that? You know what I'm saying? So, so, and I catch myself sometimes actually following the same, the same thing. You know what I'm saying? I might not be as brutal, you know what I'm saying? But it's still a tap or a slap on the wrist. You know what I'm saying? Like physically a slap on the wrist, you're still being physical with your child. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that right there, when you say violence, it is violence. You know what I'm saying? Because you wanted that child to do something and because that child didn't do what you thought she should have done. You know what I'm saying? You you want to put your hands on, the, on that child. So, you know what I mean? Like, um... I, once again, I do I do catch myself even to this day. So it's it's something that we have to you know catch on to and realize that it it you know it it can be um ah, what's the word for this 
detrimental? Yes, it can be detrimental to to uh to not just us, but our future. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And you know, we 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 gotta be aware. We we definitely just have to be aware and just conscious of of self. You know what I'm saying? First and foremost. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Before we can evaluate anybody else or you know what I'm saying, or try to say anything about somebody else or what they're doing wrong or anything like that, we have to make sure that we're stepping as we should. Uh, absolutely. And I'm um, just, you know, thank you. And I'm um, just last thing on this before we move forward to your music, your yoga and everything else. Right. Yes. Um, you know, so this is something I speak about a lot. And um, it's one sister I build with, you know, continuously. And we got an interview coming up also about why children hit their parents. And one thing that she said, she said, you know, it's illegal to hit adults. It's illegal for a man to hit another man. It's illegal for a man to hit a woman. It's illegal for a woman to hit a man or a woman to another woman. But it's not illegal for you to hit your child. Right? And that's because we come from a thought process that, you know, the child is our possession. Right? We are the owners of those children. Whereas there's an African proverb that says that I love, that I, I, I it's like, I might get a tatted somewhere. It says, the child belongs neither to the mother nor the father. The child belongs to the ancestors. Right? Yes. So, Yes, yes, you're the father, you're the mother, but that child has their own destiny. That child has their own spirit, their own will. And so your job is to guide them. Guide them in the right direction, yes. But because, again, it's a cycle that a lot of parents our age and older grew up being controlled. So so they knew is I got to control you, I got to control you. And it's like, when you realize that every, anything you try to control, you actually break. Anything you try to control, you actually harm. You try to control a balloon, it pops or flies away. You got to be gentle, right? You got to yes, be gentle. Yes. And so, um, and this, you know, is, this is yeah. not to cut you off, but just to add on, this is what actually my daughter teaches me now is that love is the best way to get what you want out of a person. Yep. And you know what I mean? That, like, and to build on that, there's an Afri another African proverb that says, if you want to be heard, whisper. So it's like, and when you think about it, how many of our grandparents, right, even if they were hitting us, but how, how serious did we know that they were, our, our elders, grandparents or not, when they whisper with the tight lips, like, I see mm -hmm. you. You're like, whoa, you know you're in trouble, right? You don't want that. You'd rather take that. You'd rather sometimes take the ass whooping than get that low, serious, stern, firm voice. Cause you know they meant business then, and so that's what we got to remember. It's like if you want to be heard, whisper. The song. And so once if you whisper, like, what happens? You got. You have to key in. You got. You got to listen in. Like wait, what you said? And in Taoism, it's a it's a it's a tenet in Taoism and Tao Te Ching that says the soft overcomes the hard all the time. And so you think yes. water puts out fire. Even when we go to human anatomy, sexually, a man gets erect and a woman soft vagina. Softens the heart. Yes. Right. Yes. That's the time, the heart, the soft always overcomes the heart. Water is the most powerful element, not because it's strong, but because of its consistent persistence. So be consistent, be persistent, be soft, be ever flowing, and know that the, the results you desire will manifest. Yes. Yes. So, yo, thanks for building on that. Let's move forward, man. Let's talk about yes. music. So you're in hip hop literature class. You're writing in your journal about all your experiences. At what point? Or you mentioned the point in the bio, but talk about the point in the thought process when you realize that I could take these words and actually make music. That's different than actually just writing and reading and actually saying, you know what? Let me make music. Let me put a melody to it. Let me write and envision sound to it and background to it. And what was that point for you? And how did you make that tra transition? That I happen? honestly just got to take it to just... Uh... It was my move to college, man, to be honest with you, being, you know, have stepping away from the hood, you know what I mean? Stepping away from that environment and just stepping into a different space because now you get a chance to see what you're made of, basically. You know what I mean? Like, it's no more of the hood as your umbrella, you know what I mean? Like, you're now put into the rest of the world. Now you have to know how to operate and how to adapt. You know what I'm saying? So while I was in college, I was around some brothers that that's what they did. Yeah. You know what I mean? They rapped and they, you know what I'm saying? They they were writing and things like that. You know what I mean? So I found it 
I found it real dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I always used to love music. You know what I mean? Like, my family, DJs, you know what I mean? Uncles, DJs, and everything like that. I followed hip-hop from a young age and things like that. But, um, so I was always following along with lyrics and just challenging myself. Can I, can I sing like them? You know what I mean? Like, I used to just... I wanted to, you know, like uh, recite lyrics, you know what I'm saying? Like from the top to the bottom, you know what I mean? Like everything, you know what I mean? Every word, word for word with uh, one of my favorite artists at the time was uh, Most Def, you know, Talib Kweli, you know, um, let's go back to KRS-One, you know what I mean? Like, uh, let's go back to uh, 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 Special Ed, you know what I mean? Like, I used to try to emulate these artists, you know what I'm saying, and rap just like them. You know what I mean? Foo Schnickens. You know what I mean? You know, I... Yeah. You, man. Helter Skelter. You know what I mean? Like, these dudes, man. Uh, man. Yeah, yo, bro. I can, I can, I can go, I can go on. You know what I mean? You know, rock and rock. You know what I mean? Like, ah, oh, man. But, um, yeah. So, while, while in college now, these dudes would, they would, they were writing and they were doing their thing. So, I'm like, yo, could do that too you know what i'm saying like i already got i got some i got some they like your price what you got you know um not actually um at that time it wasn't price it was it was it was my regular name you know what i'm saying george you know what i mean i made a name for myself but actually while i was there they used to call me zab because i had a little scuffle with a dude you know what i'm saying and i hit him with one hit a quitter, they used to call me Zab because I look like Zab Judah, and plus I hit the dude with the one hitter. So you know, <laughs> so now, so now, boom, so now they writing or whatever. So I'm like, yo, I could do that too. So I get, I have my, I have my um my journals or whatever the case is. So I'm just like, yo, I don't want, I don't know about writing new rhymes or whatever the case is my challenge was now i could actually i found out that i can actually read my writings to the beat yeah you know what i'm saying so as i'm reading my journal and i'm talking about what's going on you know what i'm saying mom's hitting hit me da -da -da -da, got welts on my skin da -da -da, and i'm doing it to the beat and i'm just like all right cool this is this is real life poetry, you know what I'm saying? Like this is this is what it is, you know what I'm saying? Like, so they like, yo, one of my men's asked me, yo, you just wrote that or whatever the case. I'm like, nah, bro, I just had this in a stash, you know what I'm saying? Like, but I ain't let them know it, it was it wasn't it wasn't a rhyme. I ain't let them know that it was it was actually my journal, you know what I'm saying? My writings, you know what I'm saying? They the whole time thinking is yo, it's some fly ass lyrics, you know what I'm saying? Like shit different you know what i mean like it's not rhyming rhyming but you can feel the passion you can feel the you can you can go with the storyline and everything like that so it was cool man so yeah yeah exactly bro and true, that just and true storytelling doesn't always rhyme right because you can mm -hmm. rhyme you can rhyme as we know a lot of people who rhyme but they say nothing all right so just because the words rhyme and it sounds good, what are you saying? And then you could be saying something extremely powerful that doesn't actually rhyme, but it's a message and a story. And as long as right. it can sound good over a beat, it's the same. It's still art, it's still hip hop, it's still music, right? So um, so talk to me real quick. So so let's stay in that era. So you're in college, you know, yes. um, you're reading, you're starting to read your journal to a beat, right? You're writing rhymes, you're, you, you start. What was, what was, what was, if, if you could have the biggest, what was the biggest challenge in that for you? What was the biggest challenge in, or if there was a challenge in expressing your deeply personal experience that you had in your journal mm -hmm. with, you know, in music with other people who you just met who weren't like, you know, connected to you in that way? What was the challenge for you? And if there was a challenge, how did you push through? And then on the other side, what was the biggest highlight for you and success in that? So the challenge for me was staying true to myself honestly because um 
you start to you you know as as moving forward you know um that was just the beginning stages of i didn't dive straight into being an artist you know what i mean like i was just i was just now i know how to rap yeah you know so so now moving forward two years later i have flunked out of that college i moved out to another college still upstate new york and um ran into a producer by the name of omari omizzle at the time mm. um African brother, um, and a young lady by the name of Angela Sims, you know, um, and they were like true artists, you know what I'm saying? Like he was a producer, knew how to do the beats and everything like that. And we were living on campus, you know, we were living off campus, you know what I'm saying? Not in the dorms or anything like that. So, you know, he had a studio, um, not really a studio, but he, he had a MP3 at the time, MPC, sorry, at the time. And he used to make the beats and, we would, you know what I'm saying? Like, just basically, he just was like, yo, he had a, he, he actually had a, um, he had a joint. He had some beats or whatever the case is. And we, you know, we, uh, a couple of my dudes, you know what I'm saying, from the school, we just wanted to see what we got, you know what I'm saying? Get in the booth, kick a little something. And, you know what I mean? Like, shortly after, I liked the way it sounded, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, but like I said before, the the um the ish the challenge for me wasn't knowing how to rap or anything like that. It was being true to me because now my stories I seen a lot of times it wasn't hit, it wasn't, it wasn't um dang, how would you say? It wasn't what everybody wanted to hear. Course. You know what I'm saying? Like by popular demand. You know what I mean? Like I felt that I had to get into the the rhyming and making a catchy song and you know what I mean? So now I started to how would you say not make up stories, but yeah, make up <laughs> make up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like but using but using actuality, you know what I'm saying? Like, but creating now, creating, creating now a a, a persona. Yep. Got it. You know what I'm saying? Of course, that's real. Of a person that wasn't necessarily wasn't necessarily me, but just who I envision myself to be. Wow, powerful. Powerful. You you know, with that, with that being said, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I started to enter little talent shows and things like that. And people actually, you know, they was, they was feeling me, you know what I'm saying? They was feeling it, you know, they was feeling the, the priceless, you know, not spell P R Y C L S S. It was just spell priceless. You know what I'm saying? So, so now fast forward, you know what I mean? Like I had to get in, in tune with myself and I wasn't too happy moving forward. I wasn't too happy with that persona anymore. Mm. You know what I mean? It didn't it didn't feel it didn't feel right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like as you evolve, yeah. as you as you become as you become the the uh better version of yourself or or you know what I'm saying like Crazy. as you move forward in life, you start to like tag, yo, question yourself like is that shit even, bro? You really feeling that? Like, is that even really you? Mm. You know what I mean? Like, it didn't, it didn't match up. It didn't add up to me. And I'm a person that, if if I can't feel it, I can't lie to myself. You feel what I'm saying? So, let me jump in real quick. You know what this yeah. reminds me of? It's crazy. I, I I never thought about. I mean, I didn't know that story. But as I hear you tell that story, it just reminds me of Kobe Bryant going from number eight to number twenty four. Right, same thing. You had the same name, same exact enunciation, spelled different. Right, so it sounds like as priceless the you know um, proper spelling you were one way, but then as you evolved and changed it and dropped the vowels and became priceless in a different spelling, you were bringing forth a different version of yourself. Yes, that's powerful. That's magical. So if you could tell me in that in this story, right? Still, you know, not getting to the big stuff yet. But during that time, what was the biggest highlight? Like, when did you know that, okay, Priceless is here? Like, I'm here, I'm doing this, and I feel good about it. Let's go. Uh, 
that'll be that that'll probably be the time when I'm at my 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 brethren call me up and um you know I'm I'm actually a, a part of a, a family of Rastafarians, you know what I'm saying? I grew up as a Rastafarian too, just as well. I had the locks and everything like that. <laughs> Youngster. And um, you know, as you know, growing up, you get into the hip, you know, the the style and when it yeah. when it, you know, I'm yeah. like, Mom, I'm on a flat top now, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't want yeah. the want them dreads, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. being a Rastafarian, I would I also I always had the culture in me. You know what I'm saying? I always always I always had so I think that is what kept me grounded and kept me to myself from, you know, straying and being this other person. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't, I couldn't fake it. You know what I'm saying? You know how they say fake it till you make it. I couldn't fake it. You know what I mean? So um with that being said, I was invited to 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 open up for Elberton Blender. You know what I'm saying? Big culture artist, you know what I'm saying? The uh, making a uh, reggae scene. And I got up on stage, man, and I'm rapping for these not hip hop fans, but I'm rapping for Rastafarians. You know what I'm saying? Like with the drums behind me and the and the band behind me, and yo, this, it was like the first time I had ever touched a stage with a band behind me, and I was actually kicking my rap lyrics Crazy. to the joints. You know what I'm saying? But I felt every bit of it, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because, yo, I'm like, yo, nah, this is, this is me. This is this is what I feel here. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I could touch the crowd. You know what I'm saying? Like, and after I got off stage, they was like, yo, my youth, good, yo, good, 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 good set, good set, my youth, good set, Bridget. And I only did, I only did one verse. You know what I'm saying? Like, but yeah. I was so for that one verse that I kicked. I was just like, yo, nah, bro. Like, this is this is the type of setting, cause, bro, I'm a huge Bob Marley fan. Nice, huge yeah. Bob Marley fan, huge, huge, huge. Not just for his music, but how he affected lives and and um, yeah, how he affected lives and and just just the world. Period. Powerful. You know, what I mean? yeah. and um, I said in my life, in my lifetime, if I can. If I can be that type of person that can inspire and just 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 affect people in that in that way as he as he did, you know what I'm saying? That that that'll be my man. That'll be something that, yeah. And you are in your own way, right? We're gonna get to that because you got some big things happening. Yeah. Let me ask you: At what point and why did you go and major in education? Like, were you always, did you know you always want to be an educator? Where did that develop from you? And like, what was that process? <laughs> Man, when I, went to, when I went to college, I I tried to get away from Mom Dukes. I wanted to get away from the house and, you know what I mean? Like, so I majored in liberal arts. You uh, know what I mean? Yeah, a lot of us did initially. <laughs> you know, I ain't know what I really wanted to do, you know, but... You know, as as going going through, you know what I'm saying, and actually having a talk with my mom, you know what I mean. Like she was like, you know, you know something that you're good at, you know, you know you're good with kids, and you know you're good with your brothers and all this stuff like that. So I'm just like, you know what, man, maybe I should. Uh, then I then I you know I, I I dabbled in psychology for like one semester, flunked that. Like I said, nah, all right, cool. What's the next thing I can do? My mom said about the kids, I'm like, you know what? Early childhood education. Powerful. You know what I mean? So I I, I majored in early childhood education and I found a, a huge liking into that, man. Like I was like, yeah, this is this is this is amazing. You know what I mean? And I'm inspired. I was inspired to I'm like, yo, one day I want to open up a, a a a chain of early childhood care centers. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, like child care centers all over, you know what I'm saying, that taught the values that I was raised by, you know what I'm saying, by, you know, by my elders and my, you know what I'm saying, like, because I'm, I'm like, yo, man, like, how I was raised is pretty good, you know what I'm saying, like, never mind, you know, the certain things that I, that I explained about before and things like that, like, Man, we have a huge family core value and system and just an educational system and just 
you know, with the each one, teach one, you know what I'm saying? And and just um it's 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 uh how would you say uh it takes a village to raise a child, that whole thing, you know, that whole mindset. I figured if if we can put that those values in that core system into the educational system, you know what I'm saying, and deal with these children at a younger age instead of dealing with them in their adolescence and things like that when they're already broken into, you know, certain tendencies and things like that. Now, while we catch them at a younger age, that's why I said early childhood, like that's 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 the ages that you want to you want to um how would you say uh, uh start to really connect with them yes to connect with a child to really guide a child in the, in the right ways you know what i'm saying like you want to you want to connect with them in at that stage when their minds are like sponges you know what i'm saying like where they want to just feed everything you know what i'm saying so yeah that's 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 the that's the time and and so what made you go because now you actually work with as your bio mentioned children with autism so what was, that? Mm -hmm. what was that process? What made you go from just general education to actually working with children with autism and maybe more special needs? Well, um, I first started out working at the Salvation Army as a counselor. Um, and actually, and, and another job as a camp counselor uh, at Camp Discovery, you know what I'm saying? Where we would take uh, children to... Uh, uh, out in the mountains or whatever the case is upstate New York and um, take them for like a week and things like that. And, uh, you know, I said, dang, yo, like take them out for a week in the cabins, you know what I'm saying? Just in the outdoors, no TVs, no nothing, you know what I'm saying? Just away from everything. And, um, you know, then working with the Salvation Army as a counselor too, just as well. I, you know, worked as a, uh, as a para, you know what I'm saying? Um, in a special ed school um, out in Manhattan. And I said, all of these different, all of these different, different jobs, you know what I'm saying, that I work as an educator, I've, there was all, there was always just the, the guidelines that you would have to follow, you know what I mean? Like the school guidelines and, and just the system, how it was set up, you could only deal with the child but so, but so far, you know what I'm saying? Like, I felt that in order to, to touch a child, you would have to deal with them, be a little stern with them. And you know what I'm saying? It, it took not just in school, you would have to deal with them outside of school. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times the learning takes place, you know, as, as, as you leave the door. You know what I'm saying? As you walk out your house, you know what I'm saying? Like there's certain things that a child has to in, encounter before he actually gets into the classroom. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like that affects that learning while they're in the classroom. You know what I'm saying? How they're able to, um, focus. yeah, how they're able to focus, key in on what you're teaching them, things like yep. that. So I said, man, everything, we, we, we really doing this thing backwards, man. Like, and, you know, when I was dealing with the child, I would have to go to a director and, you know what I mean, and, 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 and get, you know, get the, get the okays from the director to be able to talk to the parents and all of this. I'm like, you know what, I just want to deal straight, you know, in the household. And how can I do that? You know what I'm saying? Like, how can, what's another way I can do that? You know what I'm saying? I was introduced to ABA therapy, you know what I mean, where you can you can deal with the with the child you know right in the household you know what i'm saying rather than in a school setting oh, you know and, um you know i also had a had a gig as doing comhab you know what i'm saying like where i would go into the uh dealing with dealing with individuals with autism you know and um sometimes nonverbal um i had nonverbal cases where the individual was not nonverbal, 38 years old, nonverbal. And, you know, I would have to connect with that individual on a different level. You know what I'm saying? So that showed me different. It gave me different. Uh, how would you say? My skill sets, different skill sets uh, that I would have to use within myself. You know what I mean? I was going to ask, ask you, how has that work? How has that work impacted you on a personal level? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it really has. It really it, it has inspired a lot of a lot of things that I didn't know that I had in myself. You know, uh, uh, um, yeah. Nice. So, at what point now? Right, we got education, we got music, we got all of the things. When did yoga come into play? When did yoga come into play as a young black man in the hood? And not just regular yoga, you actually literally merge your hip hop music with yoga. And um, you've done some incredible things with that. You know what I mean? Like rapping on top of your head, but not just standing up in a headstand right against the wall rapping, while actually doing some of the yoga poses, twisting your bodies a certain way, your legs a certain way, your arms. I'll continue to rap. So how did you get into yoga? And then how did you, what, what inspired you to actually blend them and do and rap, do music while doing yoga? Uh, so I was introduced to, 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 uh, to yoga back in, I can't even remember the year, but it was, uh, I would think, uh, 2007, but it was back in, uh, back in Long Island with a, you know, and, um, a friend of mine, his name was uh classic tone, Anthony Esposito. Um, he was the actual producer at the time and he was actually, while, you know, while musically, you know, we were joined at the hips, you know what I'm saying? He's a producer. I'm the artist, you know what I'm saying? We working together on that level. He started to, um, gravitate towards the the uh, yoga community and as he was becoming inspired to becoming a yogi you know he is teaching me certain moves and i'm watching him and i'm like yo i like that uh that headstand that that you guys do or whatever the case is that looks pretty cool man yeah. let me see if i can do that you know what i mean so you know um i'm pretty conscious you know i was pretty conscious at the time and you know um meditation was 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 not something too far fetched from me, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, yo, you guys, yeah, that's that's a form of meditation. And I didn't know what the heck yoga was, anything like that, bro. I'm like, I just thought it was a pretty cool headstand, you know what I mean? So as I would do the headstand, not first I started out doing it on the wall, but then I got good with it to standing up on my own without the wall and things like that. I'm like, yo, this is pretty cool, you know what I mean? All right, I know how to do the headstand, you know what I mean? Like. That's cool. You know what I mean? So as the years went along, I got into yoga a little bit more and I was, you know, fascinated by the meditation and, and you know, just not just the pose itself. I was fascinated by the, the culture itself, you know, yoga, you know what I mean? That community itself. And um, so now, like I, like I said, I know how to do the headstand now. You know what I mean? So I'm like, all right, years down the line, I'm moving as as time progressed. I'm and I'm still an artist at the time. You feel what I'm saying? Like that never left me. Always consistently, you know, doing shows, doing talent shows, things like that. Still, you know, promoting myself as an artist. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm working with an organization by the name of Faith at the time. Fathers a lot in the hood, right? You and I, we both share this share this uh this connection together. Um, so they were actually doing uh, an event at uh, in Brooklyn for the youth. And I said, man, like what would be a good performance? Like I'm at, I'm at home now and I'm thinking to myself, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, um, you know, gather myself to, 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 to make a, to make a good performance. And this is for, for young kids now, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like, they're like the worst. They're like the biggest critics ever, yeah, man. Yeah, like, they tell you straight up, you suck. Yeah. Right, exactly. Oh, so I'm like, yo, bro. I'm like, I can't come with no old rhymes, no not nah, like you know what I'm saying. Like, I gotta come with something that's gonna blow their minds, yo. How can I do this, bro? So, once again, like just like the name P R Y C L S S, I'm sitting down, bro, and I get inspired again. I'm like, yo, what'd be something dope to do? You know what I'm saying? Like while I rapping or whatever the case is, bro. So I'm thinking, thinking I'm pacing back and forth in the living room. I'm telling you exactly how this is going now. Right. So I'm just like, all right, cool. I, I get into a headstand out of nowhere, bro. I don't I don't really remember how it went, but I get into a headstand. So while I'm in the headstand, bro, I'm meditating, bro. And I'm talking to myself. Right. Yes, I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to myself and I'm talking to myself out loud. Yeah. 
while in the headstand. And I'm like, yo, what the heck? Yeah. I caught myself while in the headstand. I'm talking. I'm like, I immediately jump down. I get down out of the stance and I call my brethren up. I call my boy Dave up and I'm like, yo, D, yo, what would you think if you saw me in a headstand rapping, bro? He was like, yeah, what? Bro, that shit, that's fucking, excuse my language, okay, go fire. Ahead. Fire. Mm -hmm. that fire. I said, I right, say no more. Click. Because I already knew it was fire before yeah. I called him. But he just, you know what I'm saying? Like, he just, yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. He just certified. So I'm just like, all right, boom. I'm going to do it, bro. So after I get off the phone or whatever the case is, now I get back into the headstand. Yeah, I do a verse. Nice, mind you, this verse is the same verse that I that I'm known for doing in the headstand to this day. Why? Because it's a signature. I love that verse. It's one of my favorites. Right now, I said I'm rapping this joint. I'm rapping this joint. I said, "Yo, nah, bro, this shit is fire." I got off my head. I could really do this, bro. Nice. I wasn't I wasn't moving my legs at the time or anything like that. I just would move one leg up and down, one leg. You know what I'm saying? And that's the part where I say I got my shoes on. They ain't Louis V. I like the way they look on my feet. Love that. Yeah. Right. So and then I show my kicks. So I'm like, all right, cool. Yo, bro, I did it at the perform. I, I performed for them kids, man. And I did that joint, bro. When I tell you it was history after that. Of course, of course. And you know, um, I'll tell you this now. So this is season one of the show. When we do season two, we're going to have live studio audience. When we have live studio audience, we're bringing you back on. And you got to do that on TV for the TV network. You got to do that for the network in front of the live audience. You know, like, because I've seen a lot of performances, right? And yeah. that's one of the greatest things I've ever seen in my life. You know what I mean? So that's why when you did it in Queensbridge, I was so happy that my community could see that, right? That there were some younger people, some older people that they could see that. Yeah, hip hop is 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 evolving, right? Yeah, there's some trash stuff and mainstream. It's all that stuff, but there's brothers who are who are blending and mending health with hip hop, yoga with hip hop, and not just being hip hop artists talking about yoga, but actually being a hip hop artist who do who's performing while actually doing yoga. That's incredible. Um, yes. Let's move forward, man. We don't got too much time left. I want to talk about something that has been dear to my heart that I've witnessed you, you know, journey into, man. Um, so as you know, man, being being being, um, you know, descendants of Africa here in America, you know, descendants of the you know, from the Caribbean here in America, right? Yes. Um, too often there's beef within the diaspora, right? Oh, Black mm -hmm. Americans don't mess with these people. Caribbean Americans don't mess with those people. Particularly is a lot of times the people on the continent of Africa, too many people separate themselves from. Never been something I, you know, my dad been to Africa many times, my aunt's been to Africa, but I was supposed to Af go to Africa as a kid. Didn't happen, my dad passed. I was supposed to go as an adult this year, actually. Did it happen, a lot of life things changed. Um, but I've always been deeply connected with my people on the continent. And as I watched you over the last few years, it's where brothers know each other in real life. And as you develop yeah. the relationship, with people in Uganda. How did you make that connection with the people in Uganda? And how does it feel to know that you are impacting young people in Uganda through your art and through your service because you've raised money for them, you've sent packages, you've done all of those things. So how did the connection develop? And then how does it feel knowing that you're making that impact on the other side of the world? Because literally Uganda is what, 16 hours away, something like that? It's really yep, far. Yep. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, it's amazing, man. Um, I believe we've always been spiritually connected. You know what I'm saying with 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 our um with our brothers and sisters back in Africa. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I'm from Guyana. You know what I mean? So I'm not, you know, from this country. You know what I mean? So I I know how it feels being from a third world country. You feel what I'm saying? And how 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 uh how much we don't have it there you know what i mean so i consider that when i look at people back in africa you know what i'm saying and i see them as my brothers and my sisters so i'm like yo if they ain't got it you know what i'm saying i, I really know how it feels you know what i'm saying like seriously but uh 
on another note, I give it to social media. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, social media is a great, great, um, great platform. You know yeah. what I mean? To connect with um, other individuals all across the world, man. Um, sometimes we can we can use it for good and, and bad sometimes. But when we, we when, when we use it for good, these are the certain things that can happen from that. You know what I mean? Um, I connected with the, with his brothers out there in um, Uganda. Um, this he's an actual uh, hip hop instructor out there. He teaches kid, children the art of hip hop um, through break dancing, through graffiti, through um, you know, through, through uh, 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 beatboxing, everything, the whole art. And I, I was inspired by what he was doing. You know what I'm saying? Being a part of community and you know just teaching these kids and i'm just like yo this is great this is wonderful man so the program is already running you know what i mean I, I i was just inspired to sponsor what was you know what was going on and to actually improve it and to to bring more life to it and i felt that i can do that from from america from here you know what i mean and i'm just like yo um you know how it, it would definitely be impact i didn't i didn't see myself as being such a big name or anything like that. Wow, look who woke up, man. <laughs> Somebody just ran inside, man. Like, I heard her crying, and I'm like, ah, oh, she'll be all right. The princess. She, but I said, huh? She celebrated a birthday yesterday. Happy yes. birthday, girl. Uh, yes, yes. Say thank you. Say thank you, Uncle Sugar Ray. <laughs> it's so good. She's still tired. Yeah, brother. So um, I was inspired, man, to uh, to 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 send some resources and things like that out there. And I knew myself, you know, how how far a dollar can stretch. Yes. You know what I'm saying like um, and I and I knew, you know, what 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 can you know how much it can go, how far it can go. And I said, you know, my little pocket change out here, I spend that, you know, on. We spend that frivolously on certain things, you know what I'm saying, on things that we might not need or things like that. So I'm just like, yo, I can I can afford to send a little fifty dollars and you know, a little hundred dollars, you know, to, to my people's what you know, transfer that. And when I found out that my brother over there was we, you know, we came up with a plan while COVID time, COVID was actually going on. And I was just like, Man, y'all ain't really got nothing out there, man. And I'm just like so we we set up a plan to like you know break down some food and i'm just like i can't get we can't we, we shouldn't give this to one family you know what i'm saying how about we split this up into you know many different families how can we help to provide you know what i'm saying services and give you know resources to many different families at the same time wow. and you know um we came up with the plan and we came up with a um sorry uh what is it again we came up with a budget and everything like that. And I'm just like, yo, we can get such and such amount of rice, such and such amount of beans, you know, just essential soaps, things like that, that people need day to day to survive. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I'll send the bread, you go buy the products and share them out door to door. You know what I'm saying? But you, if you have to, you know what I'm saying? The kids from the community, and that's exactly what they did. You know what I mean? Like they went on a, a, a crusade out, how would you say? You know what I'm saying? And and gave out food door to door. You know what I'm saying? Pro, you know. That's nah, powerful, powerful, brother. So, and so, you know, we'll be wrapping shortly. They actually rewarded you with a, a mural. You have a mural with your face on it out there. Yeah, man. That's, that's that. It was beautiful. That's that's powerful, man. Um, that's just that's just a show of how important your impact was. You know how important what to you might have been a small thing, right? But to others is monumental. It's, it's an yes. impact that goes beyond words, right? So they put it in the art form, right? Um, yeah. So priceless brother, in two minutes or less, two minutes or less, what do you have coming up that you're excited about? Uh. Well, right now, honestly, man, we have the uh, Carter's Creation Show yes, um, that we have on YouTube right now. Um, 
I'm very much excited about that. Uh, that's that has to deal with uh, that's geared toward children with autism. We give individuals a platform to showcase their talents and, you know, just just how good they are, you know, and just express themselves uh, through art, you know, and um, we uh, highlight small businesses in the state of New Jersey all over the place, man. We talk. Uh, that's where we we based in, in New Jersey right now. So um, that's that's uh, that we have that going on. Um, I'm in the process of being certified for, you know, uh, comedic yoga. So that's another thing I'm, I'm very much happy about um, taking it to a whole a whole nother level. We're trying to, you know, we're not trying. We're actually doing it. Doing it. Yep. Doing it. Um, that's going on. We have the children's book coming out. Um, the card is children's book coming out just as well um and this is actually not by myself i'm just a character in the book but um the mom of carter is actually was inspired to actually write her own book through the things that we've been doing together my son and her and the show and everything like that so that's that's great man um and just looking forward to just raising my daughter man this is this is what and yes, you know what I mean? Yes, you know, it's, yes, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing, brother. It's a beautiful yes, thing. Wonderful yes, thing. Yes, Bob, yes. So. Um, another two minutes or less. Leave us with some words. With some words for all our viewers, younger, older, near, far, man. Um, what are some words of encouragement, some words of inspiration you would like to leave us with? Uh I leave you, I leave you with this one, with this one quote, man. And you know, I hold this this quote dear to me too, just as well. And it says simply this: It says, "Time stays long enough for those who choose to use it." Mm. Say it again. I say, "Time stays long enough for those who choose to use it." Time stays long enough for those. Whose quote is that? Um, I can't even. Honestly, man, I would I would have to um I would have to go back, man. But this was this was this was something that I that I just uh I I, I got uh I ran into once again. I inspired by I was reading it some 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 place, man, and it stuck with me. Powerful, Powerful. It stuck with me. years and years and years and years and years. That that actually remind reminds me. I have to go back and and see who actually. Who, who who quoted that? You know what I'm saying. So yeah. I, yeah, I don't want I I don't I don't want to take the credit for it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I wrote it. put unknown. It's an unknown source. Right? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But I, I feel like every you, we're we're all inspired. No thought. You know, no thought comes nat. You know, comes. You know, come to you just like that. You know what I'm saying? You invented anything. You know I mean, what I'm saying? Uh, yes, but there is a uniqueness, right? And it could be a similar thought, but expressed differently. Right? True, indeed. Different indeed. Languages, you have different experiences, so it's not the new one to the sun, but the way you express it is different than the way somebody else expresses it in terms of words. So it's always important to give proper credit, right? Because, like, you can say, Yeah, we all inspired, but it's like, No, I said that just like that. Another person said it might have been the same exact meaning, but they said it differently, right? True, um, true, indeed. So, priceless man, we got to wrap this up. I appreciate you, brother. Thanks for being a guest. Thanks for sharing your story. I'm grateful that you brother, came in right on time to also show that not only are you an artist, not only are you a you know educator, you are a father, you are active, you are with your daughter, you are raising your daughter, man, which is part of the best part of manhood, right? Is becoming a father and then being there for your children. And I thank you, brother. We love you. We appreciate you. We celebrate you. We cherish you. Yo, yo, yo. This is your thank boy, you. the Sugar and Marston. Signing off with another wonderful episode of the Sugar Ray Show. We had the dear brother, the educator, the hip hop yoga artist, the international, worldwide servant leader, right? Service, you know, leading through service, man, sharing his resources, raising his daughter, George Vickery, aka Priceless, as a beautiful, wonderful guest today. As yes, always, sir. As always, be kind to yourself, be kind to others. We all. Bye, Bernie. Peace. Peace.